Welcome to the session on Structure Document Manager, where we are going to provide an overview of the capability we call Structure Document Management. We are also going to walk through some of the recent updates we have provided in our 22x FDO4 release. We've made some significant updates across a number of areas, as well as adding some brand new features. We've added powerful template management and where used analysis. We've also made content easier to manage by adding duplication and move support. So let's take a look at those and other features in our upcoming release. Let's start by understanding the problem we are trying to solve. When authoring documents that are data rich, such as CMC documents or documents in the submission, these documents contain large amounts of data that has been generated in other applications. This means the data needs to be copied from the originating application and pasted into each document. This is a very manual and time consuming approach and the data that is used must be manually verified for each and every usage. When reading or approving such documents, it is very difficult to understand where the data has come from as documents cannot easily trace back to the originating application. When managing large documentation sets with multiple related documents, document copying can result in copies of the same content in multiple documents with the increased overhead of having to update this content in multiple locations. Single monolithic documents make it more difficult to work and collaborate on the content in a team environment where some team members may be in a different location or time zone. The current approach to managing content means you cannot target multiple audiences using the same content, for instance, creating a publication for consumption internally and using the same content to provide documentation to an agency or a regulatory body. You may also wish to use the same content and make it available on your internal internet or knowledge base where the format and the presentation is different. Finally, controlling the appearance of content so that the styling, layout and formatting are consistent and standardized across many teams and departments is very difficult as there is no way to enforce this with traditional document editing applications. When we compare the traditional approach of document production to a more modern and efficient method, which we refer to as structured document management, we see that there are many differences. Firstly, the authoring experience is web-based with no installation of software required. Multiple authors can work on documents simultaneously and the application takes care of managing all of their changes. Because the structured document approach is designed for data rich documentation, you can seamlessly combine your content and data in the same document. Data in those documents is always kept up to date and because we provide full data traceability back to the original data source, it's always clear where the data came from. With the structured document approach, we store the underlying content in neutral XML format, and this means we can publish it to many different output formats, such as PDF and HTML. It also means that you have centralized control over the format and appearance of the final output. So you can apply corporate branding and styling and ensure that all of your documentation is consistent and standardized, even when it is generated in multiple different formats. Let's now look at the core concepts in structured document management. We start with a document map, which is similar to a document, but simply contains the list of topics in the map. The content itself is stored in topics. A topic is a fragment of content, such as a paragraph of text or a table or an image or a combination of those. A data topic can contain data from an external system and can be combined with topics within a document map. Because topics and data topics are simply included in a map and not copied, 
This means the same topic can be created once and included in many different documents. Maps and topics are organized by repository, which allows you to organize your content by team, department, or project, with different users having different permissions as required. Finally, one or more render formats are used to publish the content into multiple different output formats and control the styling and layout of the published output. The Content and Structure Document Manager consists of document maps and topics that are at varying stages of completeness. At the top of the welcome panel is the list of repositories that the user has access to. Repositories are used to organize content related to a specific product or project or team. Users must be added to a repository in order to see or edit the content in the repository. With our upcoming release, users can now create and manage their own repositories. So to create a new repository, we provide a title and a description, and users can be added as a leader, which allows them to add other users to the repository, as well as edit the contents in the repository. Adding a user as an author gives them full edit capability over all of the contents in the repository. And finally, a viewer, within the repository can read all of the contents, but is not allowed, allowed to modify any of that content. So the newly created repository is now available and appears in the list of repositories. Content can now be added to the repository using the actions on the welcome panel. So we choose to create a new document map and we give that map a title. We also provide a title for the first topic in the map. When we save that document map, we can see that we'd have the newly created map and topic in the newly created repository. Within the 3D Experience platform, 3D notifications are used to inform users of events of interest within various applications. You can use the Notification Center to control which notifications you want to receive, as well as how you wish to receive them. We've added some new notifications to help users understand when they have been added or removed or had their, had their responsibility changed on a repository. These can be enabled or disabled for each individual user. Now, when we look at the notifications that we have received in our role as a structured document manager, we can see that any time we've been removed or added from a repository, we get a notification. So now we choose to manage the members of a particular repository. We select to add a member and assign them a specific responsibility. Once we found and added that member to the repository, they will receive a 3D notification. With our FD04 release, we have introduced the concept of templates. Templates are used to control the structure and content of document maps. A document map template looks just like a normal document map and has all of the same capabilities. Templates can contain all of the content elements that are available in a normal map or topic. Our document map templates contain one or more topic templates. And the content within templates can be controlled and formatted in the same way as in a document map. You can also use all of the available content elements within a template. Each document map template and topic template has its own maturity that can be changed independently.
you can also choose to duplicate or move templates in the same way as other content items. Here we have chosen to put our templates into a dedicated repository. This allows us to control who can edit and update those templates. In our templates repository, we have two types of items. Document map templates, which control the structure and the order of the document. And topic templates contain the content and the instructions that the author is provided with. Let's start by creating a new template using the actions on the welcome panel. We provide a title for the document map template. In this case, it's a template for the process performance qualification report. We also have an initial topic template that is set to in work. And so we can provide a title in this case to capture the executive summary. We now add another topic template, this time for the introduction content. We continue to add more topic templates, this time to capture the materials and methods content. We continue to add more topic templates until the structure of the document map template is complete. We can now add instructions to each topic template to provide guidance to the author on that particular section. Instructions can be used to help the author understand what needs to be provided in each topic. Sample text, also content such as a table can be used to provide specific examples of the type of information and detail that's required in each topic. Now we will add instructions to the other topics in our template and we can include examples of the content that is expected in that part of the document. Instructions can contain any type of content element. For instance, providing a table within the instructions provides a strong example of the data that is expected in a particular topic. Authors can also copy the content from the instructions and insert that into the relevant topic. We have now added our instructions to the document map template and we can see from looking at the various topics how specific the guidance is. Detailed instructions and example content are provided to ensure the author understands exactly what they need to provide in each topic. We are going to make one final addition to the template we're going to include an existing topic, which is a generic supporting material topic. We move that topic to the relevant location within the document map template. So now all of our modifications are complete. We have finished creating our template. So let's look at how we can use that template to create a real qualification report. Using our document map template to create a new report is really simple. Authors can only see and use the templates that they have permission to access. Using the actions menu on the template, you choose create from. The user chooses a target repository for the new document map that will be created. We will select the DSX 90 repository as our target and we now have a new document map created from our map template. The document map contains a copy of each topic template taken from the map template. We can see as we scroll through the new map that we have all of the topics in the required order with all of the instructions to guide the author. The author can choose 
to hide the instructions to aid the readability of the document. We are now going to examine a number of content reuse scenarios and understand the impact of changing content that is included in multiple document maps. We add an existing topic to the current document map. Here we choose to add the supporting material topic. If there are multiple revisions of a topic, we have the choice of which revision to use. We can see here that we have both an in-work and a released revision of the supporting material topic. Using a released revision means we know that the topic will not change. On the left of the supporting material topic, we can see a symbol that shows us that this topic is used elsewhere. Our where used capability will show us exactly where this particular topic is used. We can see that it is used in four other locations or documents also. So in this case, a release topic is being included in an in work document map. That means the map is including released or finalized content that will not change. We can choose to include the latest revision of the supporting material topic. Including the latest revision means any changes to that content will be automatically updated everywhere that content is used. Let's now take a look at how we duplicate a map. The menu provides us with the available actions. When we select duplicate, we are asked for a target repository. This is where the new document map will be placed. So once we have selected our target repository, we then hit duplicate. And a copy of the document map is created and a copy of each topic in the original document map is also created. All of these items are now available in the selected target repository. The newly created map has all of the content of the original map in that original order. Now let's take a look at what's involved in moving a document map. You may move a document map for a number of reasons. You may wish to put it into a repository that will restrict the authors who can edit it or you may wish to relocate it into a repository that allows a larger audience to view it. When we access the Actions menu, we choose the Move option. The Move dialog outlines the map and all of the topics within the map that will be moved. If any of, this top any of these topics has dependent items, like embedded images, these will be moved also. So we choose our target repository and then we hit move. This will move the map and its topics, 40 items in total, into the target repository. This may also change who can view or edit the document map and its contents. So we have just walked through an overview of structured document management as well as taking a look at some of our recent updates. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for attending.